Okay, guys, so this review is a bit different because I have in the past, I think, reviewed almost every Hyphenman headphone there is on the planet because, I mean, I want to drop a video where I talk about my favorite brands in audio. And I think Hyphenman is one of them, Sony is another one, perhaps Stax and a few others, you know. That's a review for later. But today, I want to talk about three of the most recent releases from Hyphenman and three headphones that I feel like are getting love, but I'm just flabbergasted out at how Hyphenman nails their tuning, their sound profile each and every time. They're the most consistent brand in audio along with ZMF. And I think a few others, especially if you look at the IM section of the hobby, I'm a huge fan of Aroma Audio, Campfire Audio, and a few others, which have a lot of consistency in their tuning and technical performance. So Hyphenman, these are very differently priced headphones, guys. This is $600, the Ananda Nano, which is the latest iteration of the Ananda. Uh, this is the Aria Organic, which the only organic thing about it, honestly, is it's, oh, it's a great mid-range, of course. It just sounds very lush and uh, rel relatively lush because Hyphenman mid-range by nature, by tuning, by house sound is a bit thinner, which I find more appealing nowadays than I do with thicker mid-ranges like the Sennheiser mid-range from the... 650 or the 600 so more on that later but so you have these sort of faux wooden strips which i think is one reason why they call it the organic it is a lovely headphone and i've called this the headphone of the year in a previous video and i stand by it however ever since that video dropped there were people asking me how does the aria organic compare with the latest and the greatest he1000 headphone which is he1000 stealth v3 it's a mouthful there's an Aria Stilt. This is an HE1000 Stilt. For the purpose of ease in this review, I'll call this the Stilt, I'll call this the Organic, and I'll call this the Nano. Okay, so this is at $1,400, which is normally priced at $3,000. So I'm not sure if this is for a limited time only, but $1,400 for this is a steal. So that's one of the TLDRs of this video. Uh, this is thirteen hundred. So a lot of people are wondering. Okay, so this is thirteen hundred. This is fourteen hundred. Which one should you buy? So that is one question among many that I hope to answer in the course of this review. Okay, to jump right in because this is a three-way shootout, starting with ergonomics, build, and comfort and aesthetics. Then I'll talk about sound, which I'll break down into tonality and technical performance, and I'll just do a summary of who these three headphones are for. I am comparing across price classes, guys, but they're not direct. I mean, there are, it's possible to envision a world in which someone wants to own all three because there are significant differences to my ears among these three. Okay, so the Ananda Nano is Hyphenman's latest and greatest Ananda. Ananda is a Sanskrit word, which means happiness. And I, like I've said in the past, this gives me a lot of happiness. It is not as well constructed as the other more higher end headphones, but it's not cheap feeling by any means. I mean, it's a five six hundred dollar headphone. The major caveat, the major con, if I might, is the clamp force of this headphone. It's so it has a roomy ovoid cups, which is nice. And once you know you have these set on your head, you might not perceive a lot of clamp. But I do think the clamp has sort of worn over time. And but for people who are just getting it fresh out of the box, it might be ever so slightly clampy, a little more clampy than say the HD 600, which is a nice comparison. I'll come to that later. Um, it's got the sort of typical, you know, steel band, the round steel band sort of aesthetic, a double strap. This is vegan leather or faux leather. And one of the caveats, another caveat or con of this headphone is that once you move these headband extended out, you get these marks here. But overall, you know, it does look smart with the silver and black aesthetic. They've gone for a full silver chassis, which looks nice. And the black almost looks like an accent on the silver. So this looks nice. I mean, you know, the ovoid cups are roomy. Nothing to complain about as far as build quality goes. Aesthetics are nice. Comfort is fine, albeit a bit clampy. And of course, it's not as premium looking as the Ari Organic, which is definitely more premium looking and more ergonomic. And you have this cup swivel. So from the Aria Organic onwards, you have this cup swivel, which is just wonderful. You can put these headphones down on the table like this. And they do offer a little more roominess, spaciousness, not just in soundstage, which it does, but also in terms of comfort. There's almost zero clamp force here, but it's not a loose headphone that you just fall off your head if you shake your head, if you headbang, for instance. 
it is more comfy and roomy and more premium looking and there's more metal the metal in the grill and uh, in addition to the metal yoke and all that and vegan leather once again uh, uh yeah and overall it's a very comfortable looking very stylish looking i prefer this ergonomics and aesthetics of the aria organic over the nanda nano so yeah i would rate it higher for ergonomics build comfort and aesthetics over the nano but that's just me and i do think the comfort matters a lot especially the fact that it has less clamp than the nano moving on to the stealth it's almost indistinguishable from the aria organic in terms of its build quality except it's all silver and it is slightly more premium i must say because the chassis here is also metal the chassis here is plastic so the grills here are metal the chassis is plastic here the grills are metal and the chassis is metal and the headband is metal so you get more premium product and it does in some cases if you like the silver finish might look more premium it does to me and you have a suede headband which is supposed to be a little better a little more comfortable for a lot of people and but overall in terms of how clampy it is or non clamp it is is very similar to the organic the aria organic so i like the comfort of this and the organic the best the aesthetics i think is a bit of a coin toss-up between the organic and the stealth because it depends really on what sort of aesthetic you go for and this sort of classic he 1000 aesthetic has captured the imagination of a lot of audiophiles for years now people love a lot of people love this sort of brown and silver sort of finish this aesthetic this dual headband system the suspension strap system a lot of you might not but it has its followers and it has its fans i know someone who owns all the he 1000 so the he 1000 v1 the v2 this H1000 SE and now the Stealth. So there are people who have like a sofa full of these H1000 headphones and the Susbara and all that because Hyperman does have very passionate fans. A quick word about Hyperman house sound before I get into this because to the untrained ear, all Hyperman headphones might sound the same. I know this one guy who was sort of a prophet for me when I got into the hobby and I say that with a lot of sarcasm because he was just sort of like trying to dissuade me from Hyphenman. The guy used to own an AG650, and I still think he does. He still owns an AG650, and that's his primary driver. And the guy, I think, can't afford to buy higher-end headphones, but just doesn't for whatever reason, which is his deal. But he has always sort of, initially, when I went to the hobby, and I sort of saw the hobby through his eyes, which was a bit weird, I know. But, I mean, early days, right? So I'll also drop a video on classic mistakes we make as audiophiles when we start the hobby. But more on that later. But I just want to say that a lot of people dissuaded me from Hyphenman because they were used to that lush mid-range from an HD650 or an HD6XX. I just want to tell you guys that once you've heard Hyphenman mid-range with the 2K dip, which all Hyphenman headphones have, with that sort of pinna gain that all Hyphenman headphones have, with that airy, shimmery treble, variations of which all Hyphenman headphones have, with that flat extended bass response that all Hyphenman headphones have, you will come away at some point not liking that thick, sluggish, veiled mid-range that Sennheiser HD650 and HD600 have. Now, that's not just me. That happened to me. I fell out of love with these Sennheiser headphones. I feel like there's a lot of people I have introduced Hyphen headphones to because what happens is over time, these headphones offer this sort of... Because, see, if you like mid-range, which I do, if you like vocals, which I do, Vocal performance is not just aided by some warmth in the voice. It's, it's not just because you want to play a vocal that's ch chesty sounding. Vocal nuances, inflections are brought out by a lot of what goes on in terms of energy in the upper frequencies. So when you have those upper frequencies, you have vocals that come alive. You, have, you, you hear the raspiness in someone's voice. You hear when someone's out of breath, like I am right now. And you hear vocal microdynamics, nuances, right? Small changes in volume in a person's voice when he or she's singing. All that is done masterfully by Hyphenman like no other brand I can think of. I think ZMF has its own brand of vocals, which is as legit in a different sort of a way. But these guys do vocals well, if you like, if you know what I mean. So that's true for all these Hyphenman headphones. But the caveat is that they do can sound a bit bright-ish. It's not bright in a way that's sharp or piercing, at least not for me. And I feel like a lot of people who are graph first audiophiles who place an inordinate amount of importance on graphs. I love graphs because they give me a sense, an overall sense of what a headphone sounds like. But I do take into account for subjective differences in tastes that I might like or a subjective anatomical differences that I might possess. And last but not the least, the genres that I listen to. Because if I like jazz and classical, I will invariably 
gravitate towards certain kinds of frequent responses vis-a-vis -vis if I like rock and metal. So I don't understand why people don't understand that you need to have different frequency response graphs for different genres at the very least. In any case, because see, people will say that, okay, this is just a target graph. And at the same time, they'll say, oh, well, vocal here is recess because it's not Harman. Anyway, more on that later. I just want to say that all these headphones sound very distinct. And I know a lot of people who just haven't heard a high headphone might just, just pick these up and say they all sound bright but they all sound very different. This is the punchiest and most dynamic and most fun and most intimate of, of all these three. This has a bunch of treble energy, but I don't find it bright, but I do, I'm smart in a way, right? Because I know what to pair this with. I drive this with my, let's say my Earman Angel Dacam, which is not a very expensive Dacam, it's around $600. I guess it's expensive, but it's almost the same price as this headphone. And that I think adds a lot of warmth to this. Uh, I, I, I like driving this with my Sony W1ZM2 DAP, which does a great job of driving this. And I've, I've talked about this before. I mean, you do, you can get better performance out of this than with the uh, W1ZM2. But overall, I do not think this requires a lot of power. But its brightness can be tamed with the right source. Its mid-range has lushness, has warmth. So I want to also explain warmth. So warmth can mean the entire frequency response is warm. It, that can happen because of the treble and it's because it's rolled off. Or it can happen because of its bass in relation to its treble, right? Or treble in, in relation to its bass. Here what happens is you have some mid-range warm, meaning you have some lower mid, you have some upper bass. But you also have treble, so you have sparkliness. So I really dig the sound signature. It is the most intimate of all hyphamans on this table. The sound stage is not as massive as is the case with these other two hyphamans. But the image placement and distinctness is class leading and the resolution is class leading for the price. It's just amazing in terms of resolution. It's like 95% of an ARIA organic, if I may. So great buy, great product, intimate, bass is a bit punchier, but has more body in the imaging and just lovely. At the other extreme, which sounds the most distinct from the Ananda Nano is our friend, the HE1000 Stealth. The HE1000 Stealth, in my mind, is for those stacks, e-stat aficionados who like speed, resolution, airiness, who don't mind a bit of lack of body because they like that airy, floaty kind of sound. This is that sound. This is the previous hyphen sound perfected. It's light, it's floaty, it's ethereal, the treble is extended for days, and if you like listening to a flute or jazz or classical, even strings, you hear reverberations around the stage, you hear micro nuances, you get a whole lot of ambient information, information in the recording venue that this songs were recorded at, and you get resolution that I think rivals Susvara at a fraction of the price, $1,400 compared to Susvara, $6,000. I would say this is like 95% of the resolution of Susvara, and I'm someone who's very acquainted with the Susvara. If you, this is the first time you're hearing my video, or watching my video rather, do check out Susvara videos I've done. I've done a plenty. I've owned two Susvaras. And yeah, I mean, I've had a whole long love affair with the Susvara, which ended, which doesn't mean I don't respect it. I love Susvara still. But, you know, it's just a very happy parting in some ways. This guy is like Susvara, a mini Susvara with some differences. It, does, it is more, even more ethereal than a Susvara. It doesn't have the weight to strings that Susvara does, but on the flip side, it's got a little more space. The sound stage here is even better than the Aria Organic, which I'll come to. It is a massively wide sounding stage, tall images, a lot of, lot of spaciousness around instruments. Vocals just soar on this, right? Male vocals, female vocals. Female vocals in particular sound just divine. So, however, I do not recommend this headphone for if rock and metal aficionados. It does do a plenty good job of playing rock and metal because it's resolving and it's fast. So you keep up with the fast beat and the fast rhythm of rock and metal. However, if you have heard headphones that are more punchy and more dynamic, this might not be your cup of tea. But at $1,400, if you want the performance of an ESAT, I mean, this is as good as it gets. This guy right here, which I reviewed in the past and I've done two reviews of already and one of my favorite headphones of all time. I love this, the organic. The organic is somewhere in between the two in terms of its sound presentation. It has more body and more warmth in the mid-range than the HE1000 Stealth does. It has almost like 96, 95, 99 even percent resolution of the HE1000. 
only on certain extremely well recorded tracks if you're listening carefully you pick out a little more micro nuance a little more detail a little more reverb sometimes a little more you know sort of like a trailing edge of notes with this then you with this then then you do with this even in terms of soundstage width, they're sort of within biting distance of each other. But again, on certain tracks, which are meant to sound very wide, like orchestras and all, this just sounds slightly, ever so slightly bigger. So technically, this is superior to the organic, which you expect because this is was supposed to be $3,000. Right now, you can have it for $100 more. So keep that in mind. If you're looking for the absolute best technical performance that HyphenMan offers, but you don't want to splurge on a Suzvara, this is what you get, guys. But this is sort of a halfway house in terms of tonal performance and technical performance between our friends, the $1,400 AQ1000 Stealth and the $600 Ananda Nano. If you want a halfway house in terms of tonality, this is it because this has the bass impact. It's not as bassy as a full cal. I mean, it's not as impactful as a full cal clear because that's what it is. That's what full cal cans do. They do microdynamics and punch very well. Hyphen headphones, on the other hand, haven't done punch very well with the exception of the AT6 and its variants. These new hyphens do have some more mid-bass energy and they do sound more punchy in the hyphen sort of a way. So that's very, very welcome. And that does trans translate to more body in the mid-range, which does mean that you get a little more richness to vocals, a little more warmth, while you retain the inflections and the air of vocals thanks to the treble performance of these headphones. These headphones also some reviewers have called trebly and bright, and I don't agree. I think you just need to pair it right. A lot of the same reviewers might not believe in sources, which is their prerogative, but I do believe in sources. And I think for me, it's like, how can I not believe in sources? I mean, sources make such a difference. So when paired right, this is just the best all rounder, I think, among all these headphones, especially if you like soundstage, because it's wide. It's not as intimate as the Nano, as the Nano is. The Nano in many ways, I think is like the logical upgrade to the HD 600. Again, the AG600 has a little more warmth in the mid bass, a little more, a little less energy in the treble, although there are people who find the AG600 bright. So if you are one of them, you might need to train your ears to withstand this sort of brightness because I have, and it's rewarding. Because what happens is when you train your ears to sort of deal with brightness, you just get exposure and you're just more open to a wider variety of headphones. As opposed to if you're afraid of treble and if you're just ensconced within a small subset of headphones that have a treble roll off, which was how a lot of these audio prophets when I first began the hobby, and these are not international people, these are local people who tried to sort of dissuade me from getting into right headphones, but that's a story for later. And I do know a lot of beginner audiophiles are more sensitive to treble. And I think after a certain point, you become a little more tolerant of treble and you become someone who enjoys treble extension, who can appreciate a sparkly treble who understands the magic of treble and then you do like do like treble more that's not to say you have to always buy bright headphones and i this can get a bit bright for people this i mean i can see why this can get a bit bright but i do think with the right chain this is very very well managed this is perhaps the brightest so if you find this bright i mean and if you're used to listen to this and then you switch to this this might sound like this treble has been rolled off but it's all relative guys so the summary is, guys, these are all magnificent headphones. I call this the headphone of the year, and I stand by it because it's so well balanced in its ability to play all genres well. This is the technical performer of the year because at $1,400, this is mind-blowing in what it does. It is within biting distance of the technical prowess and resolution of a Stax SR009, for, for instance. This is one of my favorites, and I've covered this in several reviews. I'll link those in the description of this, of this video. And then under Nano is a winner because it's, I think, by far the most fun of Hyphen because it's punchy. As far as Hyphen punch goes, it's, it's, it's got some energy in the treble. Its mid-range is warm despite the energy in the treble because of the thickness coming from the lower mids, uh, upper bass rather. And it does resolve very, very well. Hyphen does resolve very, very well in general. So kudos to Hyphen for three magnificent headphones. But I hope this review gives you a sense of the overall sound profile of these headphones and what it does well, what it might not do well. If this was useful, guys, do support my channel by following my channel and give this a like if you've liked this video. And that's it from me for now. I'll see you in my next one. Bye-bye.